is it has a mirror that um, would be touch screen and it, so it would suggest an outfit based on the weather and occasion. Once you want to try something on, you can grab it from the closet and the mirror registers that and if it locks it down, it would coordinate the other articles suggested that would um, go with the one you're trying on. And it also tells you when you last wore it so you're not wearing the same thing again. So we have a back injury prevention device, or also for physical therapy, and the idea is we want to prevent you from bending your back in a position for lifting that's improper. If I bend to the left, it'll vibrate on my left side. If I bend to the right, it'll vibrate on my right side. If I bend forward, if my back is in an improper position, it'll buzz a little bit, and if I go too far, it'll keep buzzing. And the visual feedback allows you to see what's going on, not just feel it, so other people can see the situation. And then you can also see the, the figure do the same thing. As I bend forward, he mimics my motion. And as I bend back upright, he'll go back upright again. It's going to so this is an art installation aimed at uh, the Grand Central Station in New York City. It's, it's a metaphor is of a whispering wall, so you can talk to the wall, the wall hears what you're saying, the words that you speak actually go up in the cloud, and those words rain back on you. Have you ever made tea and forgotten about it? Well, our project will help solve this problem. So, say you brewed a cup of tea and your phone rings and you have to get it because it's your mom call. Well, you just quickly slip on the span, take the phone call, and 20 minutes later you can look down and say, Oh yeah, I had a... I had a cup of tea brewing, and the leaves will change color, going from red to purple. Red means that the cup is hot, and over time, as the cup cools, the leaves will change to purple. When it reaches the state of purple, you know you'll have to microwave that tea. This is a game to um, help kids find to collaborate and also to learn self-regulation techniques with their with their heart rate. So it's been shown with kids with ADD and ADHD that if they learn to um, focus on their heart rhythms, that it'll help them with learning, attention, and even test scores in the classroom. So this is a collaborative game where kids um, work to move the bucket around, but each space, the color is based on what their heart rate is at the time. <laughs> Alright, so now we've got one green light and you're ready to go. The problem with the identity is that project management tool is currently in place, are really boring. So what we allow the to do is visualize projects of streams of water flowing through a farm like irrigation. And uh, deadlines are modeled as valves. So you can just place deadlines, remove deadlines, interact with them. So let's say I insert a valve here. That's a new deadline I just inserted. I can view information about the deadline by actually selecting the task that's going to show them. You can actually see the task is complete by turning this on. Let's say you select this one. You can actually say, okay, I am done with it. I can just like push it around and it's done. to facilitate interactions between babies and grandparents over distance. So the grandparent would have a interface that might look something like this, the live video feed that would be connected to the baby mobile, as well as controls for all the different baby mobile items. For example, you could change the direction of the motor this way or this way, change the flow of fish while still viewing the baby's interaction and control the inflation of the fish by pressing the analogous fish. This is a system that encourages controlled breathing. Um, the user would practice controlled breathing using a respiration belt um, and the signals from your breathing would be uh, sent to an external figure such as the Buddha or a 
a doll and um, the feedback would be motion or light and um, essentially it would be breathing with you. The benefits of this would be to um, be more aware of your breath and um, practice better breath control. Yes. We have implemented a fully compliant IP connection, internet protocol connection, between these two computers using uh, xylophones and human players. The idea is that when, this, when one computer wants to send a message to the other computer, it decodes the packet into notes that then uh, display to the player. So if the player plays the notes correctly, they go then to the other computer who, de who recodes them into a packet. The idea is that we're basically putting a human at the lowest level of the internet. user interface course was uh, a course that challenges you to think outside the box um, and for me personally we were working with technology that I might never have imagined to have my hands on and um, you know it, it showed me that things like coding and programming is not as hard as you might think and it shouldn't be something that is unapproachable and um, it can be learned. When talking with Miko about our project ideas, she would always push us to do more with our ideas. So for my project, I had this set idea, but she would always talk about what I could add to it, such as social networking and maybe like reflecting on what you did last time you wore something. So all these features that would really make it something new. I just love the whole electronics and building uh, uh, things that are out of the norm with, with, with interaction with, with computers and electronics instead of uh, just a screen and a mouse and a keyboard. I think just programming a microcontroller, I think, was just like in general, was really cool. You have to plug in like four sensors and light sensors. Um, and so, like, knowing how to do that and combine those to make, you know, different projects and prototypes is like really useful. So whenever I have an idea for a random cool thing, like I know how to build it now. Kimiko taught me that it's really difficult to embed computing into a tangible interface in a way that's meaningful and useful. Um, I think one great thing for me was just being able to kind of scope out thinking about space. Uh, because often when I'm working with software systems, there's just a very limited uh, space and, and interface that we're working with. But here, it was, we have to think much bigger. But yeah, it's just kind of much larger scope. It's really, really great. It so gives me like a new appreciation of how to just make like actual tangible user interfaces. It was a really good class. Um, I learned a lot. It was fun. I like making things. So um, this is a, a new way to think about design, and um, I think it's a great class. And I would recommend anyone from any discipline to partake.